chapter 4 globalization and the indian economy as consumers in today's world some of us have worldwide choices of goods and services before us the latest models of digital cameras mobile phones televisions made by the leading manufacturers of the world are within our reach every season the new models of automobiles can be seen on the indian roads the days have gone when we used to see the ambassadors and the fiat cars on the indian roads today indians are able to buy cars nearly from all the top companies in the world a similar explosion of brands can be seen in many other goods from shirts televisions to proceed to the processed fruit juices basically today we are talking about the globalization concept today we are living in a world where we have wide variety of choices and services before us the latest model of the cameras mobile phones televisions made by the leading manufacturers of the world are within our outreach today we see various varieties of cars on our indian roads which are the top most brands not the ambassadors or the fiat which are the old brands today we have variety of shirts television shows and also the processed fruit juices such wide range of choices of goods makes our market a relatively recent phenomenon you would not have found a wide variety of goods in the indian markets even two days or two decades before in the matter of years our markets have got transformed and have been transforming so how do we understand these rapid transformations what are the factors that bring about these changes and how are these changes affecting the lives of the people and we shall dwell on these topics in this chapter in this chapter basically we will be looking at to understand how do we understand the rapid transformation in our indian market what are the factors that are bringing about these changes and how are these changes affecting the lives of the people let us look into the details of the chapter to understand the answers of these questions production across the country that is the first topic what we are going to deal now how is the production happening across the countries until the middle of the 20th century production was largely organized within the countries as we all know the production of the countries used to happen only in one country or a well developed country a well advanced country today the situation is they have crossed the boundaries of these countries and where raw material food stuff and finished products colonies such as india exported the raw materials and food stuff and imported the finished goods trade was the main channel of connecting distant countries this was before large companies called the multinational co corporations or companies emerged on the scene so before the concept of multinational corporations or mnc's came into emergence on the scene the production was done largely within the country what crossed the boundaries of these countries were the raw materials the food stuff and the finished products colonies such as india exported the raw materials and food stuff and imported the finished goods the main channel connecting the distant countries was trade but now 
after the emergence of multinational companies or MNCs into the scene. An MNC is a company that owns or controls the production in more than one nation. Any company which has its operations or production in more than one nation is called as MNC. MNCs set up offices and factories for production in regions where they can reach to the cheap labor and other resources. This is done so that the cost of the production is low and the MNCs can earn greater profit. Basically, MNCs are the companies which operate in more than one nation. They set up their offices and factories in the regions where they can get the cheap labor and other resources. This is also done so that the cost of the production is low and the MNCs can earn greater profit. Let us see one example. A spreading of production by MNC, how is it done? The production producing industrial equipment designs its product in the research centers in the United States and then has components manufactured in China. These are then shipped to Mexico and Eastern Europe where the products are assembled and the finished products are sold all over the world. Meanwhile, the company's customer care is carried out through call centers located in India. So basically, we are talking about an example of an MNC where it has its industrial equipment design products in research centers in United States. Then the component moves to China for manufacturing the component parts. After the manufacturing the component parts, then they are shipped, means then they are sent to Mexico and Eastern European nations where they are assembled and the finished products are sold all over the world. Meanwhile, to answer the queries of the customers, we have customer care centers located in India. So like this, the MNC has its production at different different countries in different different places for different different works that have to be done. First the planning, then the raw materials, then the final finishing, then assembling them and sending them to the other countries to sale. In the meanwhile, to address and give the details about the products, they use the customer care centers located in India. You can see the picture, how the customer care looks like. In this example, the MNC is not only selling its finished products globally, but more important, the goods and the services are produced globally. As a result, production is organized in increasingly complex ways. The production is divided into small parts and spread out across the globe. In the above example, China provides the advantage of being the cheap manufacturing location and Mexico, Eastern Europe are useful for their closeness to the markets in the US and Europe. India has highly skilled engineers who can understand the technical aspects of the production. It also has educated English speaking youth who can provide customers care services and all this probably can mean 50 to 60 percent of the cost saving for the MNC. The advantage of spreading out the production across the borders to multinational companies can be truly immense. So basically they are giving the statistical details of the Example what we discussed just now that is the services what we are making are also globally produced. 
the production is organized increasingly in a complex way where we are taking the advantage of everywhere where the possibility of the cost of production can be reduced for getting the cost of production at lowest possible levels mncs try to operate on this manner first thing is we get the china products at very cheap manufacturing cost then the location of closeness to the markets is the advantage for mexico and the eastern european countries and then we have the markets of europe and us close by when we look at the skilled engineers who can understand all the technical aspects of production and also address the queries in english language so they have set up the customer care centers in india with this on an average totally 50 to 60% of the cost was saved for the mncs and once you start doing this kind of operations the multinational companies or corporations can truly earn money in large amounts that's why they do operations globally and also sell their products globally interlinking production across countries the next topic what we are going to see here in general mnc set up production where it is close to the markets where there is skilled and the unskilled labor available at low cost and where there is availability of the factors of production is assured in addition the mncs might also look for government policies that look after their interest so in this part of the chapter we'll be reading about where does an mnc set up its units mnc sets up its productions which are very close to the markets where they are, have the availability of skilled and unskilled labor at very low cost where they have all the other factors of production available and also they look at the policies offered by the local governments which can look after their interests let us see the details of those having assured themselves of the conditions mnc set up the factories and offices for production the money that is spent by assets such as land building machines and other equipment is called investment made by mncs is called foreign investment any investment that is made with the hope of earning profits is called an asset an investment is made with the hope that these assets will earn profits in the future so any investment which is made by an mnc in another country is called foreign investment now at the times mnc set up their productions companies jointly with the local companies of these countries so that they will have the benefit of the local company of such joint production is twofold first the mncs can provide money for the additional investment like buying new machines for faster production second the mncs might bring with them the latest technology for production secondly when they bring the latest technology with them in the production these are the advantages the third step what they can do is buy but most of the common route for the mncs is to buy up the local companies then to expand the production that is the way what they use here there is a case study for us to understand this much better let us see an mnc with a huge wealth can quite easily do those so they take cargill foods a very large american mnc has bought over smaller indian companies such as parak food parak food has a large built network across the various parts of india where its brand was well reputed also parak food owns four oil refineries whose control has now been shifted to cargill foods so the cargill is now the largest producer of edible oil in india 
with the capacity to make 5 million pouches daily. So, in fact, the companies can either share the knowledge, get the investment, or sometimes they themselves buy the companies and operate from there. The classic example what we can see here is the Cargill Foods, which is a very large American MNC, has bought over the smaller Indian companies such as Park Foods. So the Park Foods is an Indian company which has large marketing network in various parts of India where its brand was well reputed. Also, Park Foods has four oil refineries whose control has now been shifted to Cargill, where now the Cargill is the largest producer of edible oil in India with the capacity to make 5 million pouches daily. In fact, many of the top MNCs, what we discuss now, have wealth exceedingly the entire budget of developing countries and governments. So, with such enormous wealth, Imagine the power and the influence of the MNCs. There is another way in which the MNCs control the production. Large MNCs in developed countries place orders for the productions with small producers, garments, footwear, sports, items are the examples of industries where production is carried out by large number of small producers around the world. These products are supplied to the MNC, which then sells them under the name of their own brand names to the customers. The large MNCs have tremendous power to determine price, quality, delivery, and labor conditions for these distant producers. Thus, we can see that. There are a variety of ways in which the MNCs are spreading their production, in interacting with the local producers and operating them globally. By setting up partnerships with the local companies and by using the local companies for supplies, by competing with the local companies or buying them up, MNCs are exerting strong influence on production at these distant locations. As a result, production is these widely dispersed and is getting interlinked. You can see on this picture where a woman at home in Ludhiana is making footballs for large MNCs. Now, the point here is. Parak Foods example gives us a clarity on how the MNCs operate. Apart from there is another way that the budgets of MNCs gives us a clarity how influential the MNCs can be. Sometimes they really have budget which is larger than a developing country's own entire year's income. There are other ways in which MNCs control production. Basically, they develop country orders and they put the orders to the local producers or small producers in the products or items like garments, footwear, sports and industries where production is carried out by a large number of small producers around the world and in return they buy these supplies from these local producers and they add their own name, brand value and sell it to the customers. What do the MNCs do then? The MNCs maintain the quality, delivery, labor conditions for these distant producers and they also make sure that their production is supplied across the globe and they control the production across the globe. By setting up partnerships with the local companies and by using the local companies for supplies, they are closely competing with the local companies or buying them up. MNCs are exerting a strong influence on production at these distant locations. So, basically, as a result of all these activities in MNCs, production in these widely dispersed locations is getting interlinked.
Uh, moving on. Foreign trade and integration of market. For a long time, foreign trade has been the main channel connecting the country. In history also, we have read that trade routes were connecting India with South Asia to markets both in the East and the West with an extensive trade that took place along these routes. As we could see now, the trading interest would be attracted various trading companies such as East India Company and Company to India when then basic functioning of foreign trade. But to put it in simple, foreign trade creates an opportunity for the producers to reach beyond the domestic markets. That is the markets of their own countries. Producers can sell their produce not only in the market located within the country, but can also compete with the markets located in other countries of the world. Similarly, for the buyers, the imports of the goods produced in other country is one way of expanding the choices of goods beyond the products which are produced domestically. So basically, what are the advantages of foreign trade? The advantages of foreign trade is it creates an opportunity for the company to sell their product or the producer beyond the reach of the domestic market that is their own country's market. They can also sell it in other countries in other markets where they have wide possibilities or expansion of their sale. Producers can now sell them in any market. Similarly, the buyers or the imports of the goods produced in other country in one way is expanding the choice of the goods beyond what is domestically available for the consumer to use. So it's an advantage for the producer as well as for the consumer and it also creates a lot of job opportunities in between this process of the product reaching from the producer to the consumer and from there it makes a lot of wealth overall in the international market. See the example here, gift and toys, impressions, stationery, all these shops have all the local and the non-local products. These are mostly filled with the Chinese toys in India. Within a year, 70 to 80 percent of the toy shops have replaced Indian toys with the Chinese toys. In general, when the opening of the trade, goods travel from one market to another, so the choice of the goods in the market rises. Prices of the similar goods of the two markets tend to become equal. Another producer and producers in two countries now closely compete against each other even though they are separated by thousands of miles. Foreign trade thus results in connecting the market or integration of market in different countries. So basically once we bring our products from foreign markets to Indian market and Indian markets to foreign markets, it is literally meaning that we are competing face to face as because we discussed about the producer and the customer of choices and marketing strategies. Now, once the marketing strategy has come, the producer is going to compete with the other producer of the same product and then the competition arises. Though they are separated thousands of miles away from each other, still they compete with each other. At the same time, integration of markets in different countries also happens. So, foreign trade thus results in connecting of the markets across the globe. What is globalization? In the past three decades, two to three decades, there has been a lot of MNCs been looking around the world which would be looking for cheap for their production. Foreign investment by the MNCs is thus in these countries been raising. At the same time, 
foreign trade between the countries has been rising rapidly a large part of the foreign trade is also controlled by mncs for instance the car manufacturing plant that is ford motors in india not only produces the cars for the indian market but is also exporting the cars to other developing countries and its components many of them around the world likewise the activities of the mncs involve substantial trade in goods and also in services so basically the mnc concept is to make things at possibly very less cost and sell them globally and earn huge profits for this purpose they reach to the places where they have availability of labor availability of the raw materials at very less cost taking the concessions from the governments set up their plants and operation units there and from there they operate it and they produce it then they take it to the ne the next level where their cost is very less and from there it is sold to the global market and earn huge profits basically mnc's concept is this produce something at very less cost with very less investment and sell it across the globe and earn profits the result of the greater foreign investments and greater foreign trade has been greater integration of production and markets across the country globalization in this process of rapid integration or interconnection between the countries mncs are playing a major role in the globalization process what is that globalization process more and more services investments technology are moving between the countries most regions of the world are in closer contact with each other than a few decades back besides the movement of the goods services technology there is one more way in which the countries are connected this is through the movement of the people between the countries people usually move from one country to another in search of better income better jobs or better education in the past few decades however there has been much increase of movement between the countries due to various restrictions so basically when we are talking about globalization it is bringing foreign investment to the countries it is getting foreign trade it is doing greater integration of production and markets across the countries so it is leading globalization is the process in which the rapid integration or interconnection between the countries happen mncs are playing a major role in the globalization process more and more goods and services investments and technology are moving between the countries it's not only this way that the people are moving but there are also people who are traveling abroad for jobs or better incomes and better education through which the movement between the countries is done by people and there is a lot of opportunities which is making them to migrate from one country to another country so globalization is not only offering investment globalization is not only bringing trade globalization is not only integrating production and markets but it is also making job opportunities available to millions of people across the globe factors that enabled globalization what are the factors that enabled globalization the first factor that enabled globalization is technology rapid technology or rapid improvement in technology has been one of the major factors that has stimulated the globalization process for instance in the past 50 years we have seen several developments in the improvement of transportation technology this has made the faster delivery across the long distances possible at very low cost so with the growth of technology what are the factors that made globalization possible earlier 50 years before the globalization concept is not there so even 30 years before there is no concept of globalization so technology has made it possible for the 
multinational companies to enter into the globalization process. It is the rapid improvement in technology, especially the transportation technology, which made fast delivery of goods across long distances possible at the very low cost. Then we have containers for transportation of goods, which you can see which are on the screen. Very large, very huge, and very far they can reach very fast with huge volume. Then we have the development of information and technology, which is a remarkable development. In the recent times, technology in the areas of telecommunications, computers, Internet has been changing rapidly. Telecommunication facilities, the telegraphs, telephones, mobiles contact anyone around the world to access information instantly and to communicate from remote areas. This has been facilitated by the state communication device. As you should be aware, the computers have now entered almost every field of activity and they are venturing into the amazing world of internet where you can obtain information and share information and almost anything you want to know internet allows you to send instant electronic mail and talk voicemail across the world at negligible cost the second important thing what technology has brought is the development of information and communication technology with which we can reach anybody in any corner from any corner of the world which facilitates us to talk with the people across the globe. We also have access to internet where it allows us to send electronic mail or email, voicemail across the world at negligible cost. So, Technology has helped a lot for development of globalization. You can see the use of IT in globalization where information and communication technology has played a major role in spreading out the production of services across the countries. Let us see the example here. A news published from London Readers is designed to print it in Delhi. The text magazine is sent through internet to Delhi office. The designers in Delhi office get the orders how to design the magazine for the office in London using telecommunication facilities. Then the designing is done on computer. After printing, the magazines are then sent by air to London and the payment of money for designing and printing from a bank in London to a bank in Delhi is done instantly through the internet. That's how the internet helps for having operations across the globe. Let's move on now. Liberalization of foreign trade and foreign investment policy. Let us now return to the example of the imports of Chinese toys in India. Suppose the Indian government puts a tax on the import of toys, what would happen? Those who wish to import these toys would have to pay tax on this. Because of this, the tax buyers will have to pay high price on the imported toys. Chinese toys will no longer be as cheap as in the Indian market and the imports from China will automatically reduce and the Indian toys will prosper. So tax on imports is an example of tax barriers. It is called a barrier because it becomes some restriction that has been set up. The governments can use trade barriers to increase or decrease the foreign trade and to decide what kind of goods and how much of each should come into the country. That's how the governments use the trade section. So, it is called tax barrier or trade barrier. Indian government after independence has put barriers on the foreign trade and foreign investment. This was because considered necessary because to protect the interests of the producers within the country from foreign competition. Industries were just coming up in the 1950s and 60s 
and the competition from the imports at that stage would not have allowed these industries to come up. Thus, India allowed imports only on essential items such as the machinery, fertilizers, and petroleum, etc. Note that all developed countries during the early stages of development have given protection to their domestic producers through a variety of means. Starting around 1991, some far reaching changes in policy were made in India. The government decided that the time has come for Indian producers to compete with the global producers around the globe. It felt that the competition would improve the performance of the producers within the country so that they would have to stay and improve their quality. This decision was supported by the powerful international organizations. Thus, barriers on foreign trade and foreign investments were removed to a very large extent. This meant that goods could be imported and exported easily from the foreign companies and set up their factories and offices in our country. So basically, the liberalization policy was not there initially in our country because now we can see the Chinese toys being filled in our Indian shops because they don't have any choice. Earlier, it is in 1950s and 60s, there were taxes on the imports that are being imported into our country. Indian government has kept these taxes because it wants to encourage the Indian industries and the producers in the initial years because it is a time when the industries were set up is 1950s and 60s. In that time, if they were exposed to competition from the foreign countries, they would not be able to set up anything and develop anything. So, the Indian government has allowed the import taxes in 1950s and 60s. Only the essential and important items such as machinery and fertilizers, petroleum are allowed to be imported into the country. As the stages passed by, it is around in 1991 that some far reaching changes in the policy were made in India. The government decided that the time has come for the Indian producers to compete with the producers around the globe. It felt that the competition would improve the performance of the producers and also will help them to maintain their quality and services. The decision was supported by the powerful international organizations. Thus, the foreign trade in India and foreign investment in India, the barriers were removed and it opened for foreign trade and foreign investment in India to a large extent. So now it is very easy to import or export the foreign fruits or foreign products or even foreign companies can come and set up their factories and offices in India. Now what about the removing of the barriers or restrictions by the government known as? The removing of barriers and the restrictions by the government is known as liberalization. With liberalization, the trade business are allowed to make decisions freely about what they wish to import or export. Government imposes much less restrictions than before. That's why it is said to be called as liberal, which means liberalizing everything. The trade of India has been liberalized after 1991.